All right, so if we want to have that smooth, effortless power in the golf swing, we want to look like we're swinging easy and still hit it really far, there's a couple things that we have to do right. We have to be able to have lag in the downswing, which we all know is right. We see all the pros do that. We have to clear those hips out of the way. So if you struggle to clear your hips out of the way, if you struggle to get a proper weight shift to the right and then back to the left, well, a lot of that has to do with your rhythm, your tempo, your timing. And to be honest, if you get that right, it's gonna fix the lag. It's gonna fix the weight shift. It's gonna fix the hips clearing open, but it's frustrating. Because your buddies will tell you stuff like, uh, you're being quick from the top, just, just smooth it out, swing a little easier. But that doesn't really work. If I knew how to do that, I'd already be doing it. Well, there's an actual sequence to this that I'm gonna walk you through. Just step by step in this video, grab a club right now, follow along with me, and I'll walk you through it from start to finish. We'll get these things knocked out so that you got your best swing ever and start hitting the ball really, really solid. So the first one is the weight shift. And this is a big misconception. The weight shift is just a simple, it's not a big, hard movement to right to left. It's just a simple shift back and forth. It feels something like this. If you're just to take your feet, this is a pretty quick tempo, but I'm just shifting my weight right and left. You can see that I'm, if I slowed that down and made it more a stable head, there's not much going on here. This is the weight shift in the golf swing though. It's just a back and forth motion like that. So do a good 15, 20 of these to get the feel of it. And then let's time that up with a swing. So what happens in the back swing, most players tend to pick the club up before they shift their weight. What we wanna do is have that little weight shift to the right, so it's kinda of like I'm going to the right, then my back swing starts. And a great way to feel this is like a little kind of float load drill. So if you just kinda of take your, your hand now, your club, and swing it back and forth as you're doing this little step to the right, step to the left, you notice what's going on here, if I slow this down, is I shift my weight to the right, my club lags behind, and then it goes back. I shift my weight to the left, the club lags behind, that's the lag in your swing, and then it goes to the left. Sounds complicated, there's an easy way to get the timing of this. Grab the club with both hands, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and swing the club a little bit forward. I'm gonna shift my weight to the right. I'm actually gonna have my hands kind of reverse lag, actually be going this way, and then I'm gonna brush the ground with the shaft kind of leaning backwards in my backswing. Then I'm gonna to shift to the left, I have lag going the other way, and I'm gonna brush the ground going through. Sounds complicated again, it's really easy. I'm just going back and through like this. So get the timing of that. If I don't have the sequence of that right, if I go too fast, then I'll feel like I start to throw the club, it doesn't really work out. I wanna be able to lag the club, hit the ground. Lag the club, hit the ground. So my weight goes right, or to my right side. I lag it, I hit the ground. My weight goes to the left, I lag it, I hit the ground. Right weight shift, lag, hit the ground. Left weight shift, lag, hit the ground. And when you put it together, it just looks something like that, just to get the sequence of that. Ideally, I'd hit the ground roughly in the same spot each time, around the same spot each time. But again, it shows you how little of a weight shift there is, and it shows you how free the hands and arms have to be. If I get stiff and try to muscle this thing around, it doesn't look nearly as good. So once you've done that 30 or 40 times, you have the overall motion, the movement down. Then we just need to add a little bit of distance to it. We need to take it to the top of the swing, going back and through, and that's gonna get the speed there. So what's happening there is I just wanna think about, if I took my arms to my side now, how would I shift and then get my hands to go kind of behind my body like this, so I go ahead and let my knees move. Another mistake people make all the time, they try to lock all this stuff in. That doesn't work. That's not how the golf swing works. I don't wanna have all this locked in, I can't do my weight shift. I get my knees and my legs to move. Look how my knees kind of go back and forth. They're pivoting. Look how they come, um, you know, kind of this way my left knee kicks in, this way my right knee kicks in. So my legs are moving, which allows me to move my hips, and then I can swing my arms. The same thing's happening in the golf swing, just a little bit bigger. So I shift to the right, I lag my arms, they swing back. I shift to the left, I lag my arms behind, and they swing through. So if I'm making a bigger swing, it's the exact same thing we did there on a smaller swing, I'm just turning more back and through as I get that down. Now, to finish this off, one thing that really helps, so once I started to realize that the weight shift kind of dictates everything, that dictates the flow, that dictates the lag, then all I need to do is make sure when I swing down, 
I have this lag now and I go ahead and finish it all the way on through to my front foot. One of the most underrated things is a good finish. I know it sounds cliche, it sounds funny, but I'm telling you, you're just gonna hit the ball better if you have a good finish. So when I come through to my front foot, I've done my little kind of <clears throat> flowing swing back and forth. As I go in my downswing, I shift to left, I lag, and then everything finishes with my belt buckle towards my target. I wanna get my right shoulder as far to the target as I can. And I wanna make sure that this right foot comes completely off the ground. I don't want any part of my back foot to be on the ground. It should be straight up and down like this. And that just ensures that my hips can clear out of the way and come through the shot. So you remember in the beginning of this video, I talked about three specific pieces that we're gonna cure with this. Having lag in your downswing, having those hips clear open, and also as you're coming on through, getting that weight to shift to the front foot instead of falling back on the right foot. Let's do this drill one more time. And then we're gonna talk specifically on how to solve each one of those problems. So I do my little drill where I'm shifting my weight and letting my arms flow back and forth. Really get this down to where it feels second nature before you move on from this. Now, the biggest problem with lag, what people are doing is they're picking their wrist up right away and then they're throwing their hands. That's the opposite of what we're doing here. You'll notice as I shift my weight to the right, my hands are bent the opposite direction there. That's the opposite of picking the club up. It's actually lagging back the opposite direction. Then as I shift my weight to my left, see what happens is my body moves to the left first and the club is still setting like this. That makes it way easier to get lag. So try that again and really pay attention to when you go back, let's exaggerate. Hands are in the opposite direction of picking it up. And then when I switch directions, it's naturally gonna to start to kick back into a lag position. Makes it way easier. So that's piece number one. Piece number two, getting those hips more open. A lot of times what players will do, again, is they pick the club up with the hands and arms instead of having it go this way. I'm exaggerating, we'll tone this down in a minute. But instead of having it go this way, and then what they do is after they pick it up really sharp, is if you pick it up, you naturally wanna throw it. As soon as I start to throw this club out, as soon as I start to release the club, the hips will stall because I can't have my body rotate as I'm throwing or I'll be way over the top. So your hips will stall as soon as you start throwing. This solves that too. So I've got my lag starting and as I shift my weight now, because the club is setting so much later, the hips already start to be way more open before I let the club go because I'm not letting the club go down through it. So having your hips not be open enough is more of a byproduct of picking the club up early and throwing it from the top so your body stalls rather than lagging the club as you're going back, getting your weight to shift, and as you start to shift to the left and open, that's all gonna happen naturally. Now, as far as piece number three, falling back to your right foot, that's actually a problem because our weight shift is off. When people fall on their back foot, they do this type of a swing, right? The weight goes left on the back swing and then we intuitively go this way on the downswing. This drill solves that too, because I make sure, because I'm doing these little shift motions between my right foot and my left foot, you could even pick your heels up as you're doing these if you wanted to. But as I do those little weight shift motions, I guarantee that my weight goes to my right foot first, and then it has to shift to the left as I'm coming through. If you have a problem falling it back on your back foot, it's because you went left in your backswing and fell right on your downswing. This solves that. We go right, left. I almost like to think of it in my downswing, I'm kind of loading up in my backswing, getting everything here. My downswing, I'm letting all the energy from my body just go right through the golf ball, right out toward the target like that. So it's like my, all my energy is flowing through the ball down the fairway or down toward the green. So those three things are all gonna be solved when we do this little drill. Now, there is one problem with this. You see, a lot of times players have never learned to square the face up the right way. And if we get this flow of the club to where we're going back and through, the face is wide open. And when you have that face wide open, that ball is gonna go way to the right. So you get more lag, you open your hips, you start to finish your weight shift to your front foot, but the ball goes that way. That's because the more lag we get, the face is naturally gonna be more open and what the pros are doing is they're using their wrists in a very specific way to get that ball to go dead straight or even get a nice little draw on it like I demonstrated in the beginning of this video. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you exactly how to do this, something I call the anti-roll method. Most players have been taught to roll the club face, to, or to roll the club to square up the face, and that's simply not going to work with what you're seeing the pros do. I'm going to teach you this anti-roll method so that you know exactly how to use your wrist so that all of a sudden you can look like the pros, great big angle of lag, nice tight power draw, you're going to be hitting it the best you have of your life. I'm going to play a preview of that here in a second. All you need to do is click one of the cards that you see on the screen, or if you don't see one of the cards, no worries, go down to the link below in the description. If you click either of those, it'll take you to that video and you can watch the anti-roll method right away. So best of luck. I can't wait to show it to you right now. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there, 